This video is going to cover the autopilot modes in the H145 in Flight Sim 2020. Even though the 145 is a very stable helicopter to fly, it has a number of autopilot systems that can help you. It has the autopilot control panel just in front of the collective on the pilot side or the captain side of the aircraft and it also has the tablet app which have additional controls for the autopilot and I'll run through what they do and how they can help you. The autopilot control panel is used to control the autopilot systems and the main systems are shown along this top row with the four buttons. You've got the auto trim, the backup, autopilot one and autopilot two. The auto trim is a system which controls the trim and feedback forces of the cyclic control. It allows you to fly the helicopter hands off and intervene using the cyclic trim release button. The backup or backup SAS is an independent system and it provides only three axis basic stabilization. It's to always remain on, but only used in the event of an AP1 or AP2 failure. AP1 and AP2 are redundant autopilot systems and they're implemented in aircraft management computers. These systems provide both basic stabilization as well as upper modes like heading, nav, etc. When both systems are enabled, one will act as primary and the other will operate in a standby mode. You'll know if they're off because that button will light up saying off. Beneath them are the upper modes and I'll demonstrate how to use them and explain a little bit about them as I go on. CRHT or cruise height works like an altitude hold but it uses radio altimeter as the reference for this. You can use it over land but it's mainly designed for use over water and it's a lot smoother if you do. IAS or indicated airspeed works exactly the same as a fixed wing airspeed hold. It allows you to hold your selected speed. Easy enough. Alta or altitude acquire. When you turn the knob, the bug's going to move, so it's going to adjust the altitude that you want to achieve. Now, it's not going to go to that level until you actually press the button. So it's a way of presetting a height that you want to climb to or descend to. So you rotate the knob, and then when you're ready to start climbing towards it, you press the button, and it'll automatically use the uh, vertical speed to fly up toward that height. Alt or altitude hold works the same way as a fixed wing aircraft altitude hold mode. Wherever you're at, it will maintain that level using the barometric altitude. The only way to change that set point is by using the collective beep trim, which we use on the little iPad. I'll discuss that later or switch it to alta mode. Depending on where you have the butterfly switch selected, you'll either have heading or track hold. This works the same as fixed wing heading hold, but it will try and use roll to accomplish the task at higher speeds and yaw while you're hovering under 30 knots. Track will consider the current wind and pick a heading that allows a straight line to be flown in that direction despite of any crosswind. VSFPA or vertical speed or flight path angle depending on where you have that butterfly switch selected works the same as a fixed wing vertical speed hold when in FPA mode the aircraft speed is taken into account and it allows the descent angle to be defined. So here we are inside the cockpit of the 145. Now, if we look over at our uh, autopilot panel, I'll talk about quickly the butterfly switch. So that switch in between heading and track, vertical speed and the FPA. Easy peasy, that's how we operate it. Now to adjust these, you can just rotate the knobs and that's gonna adjust what we see. If I can position my head, for example, if I move my Alt A, you'll see a little uh, arrow moving and that tells me the height that I want to go to. If I want to adjust my heading, I'll rotate the heading bug around and that rotates the actual uh, heading that I want to set the autopilot and then when I'm ready for it, there's just been an eclipse outside, when I'm ready for it, I press the button in. But what I'll do first is I'll take off and I'll just fly and then I'll activate these modes as I go. But I'll bring up here on the iPad, so if you click on the time at the top, we see our autopilot. And it says upper modes are inhibited while on the ground, so we need to be airborne to actually use the autopilot. So I'll keep this on as I take off, and then we'll just mooch around Edinburgh and see what we can see. So, bringing the power in. Up we go. And we'll avoid crashing at any trees as we head it. Now we'll head uh, off to the northeast here. Stay clear of Edinburgh itself and then we'll get ready. So now that I'm airborne the aircraft is pretty steady and it's going to fly 
on these reference points, pretty stable because, like I said, it is a, a stable helicopter. If you want to interrupt this, you're going to press and hold the cyclic trim release button. Now that's going to basically disconnect the AFCS, the uh, Automatic Flight Control System. And it allows you to point the aircraft where you want to go, so if I press and hold the button there, you see on the iPad it says TR, that's the trim release, and then if I let go, I've asked the aircraft to stay in this position. So I've basically got the aircraft in an orbit because I pressed and hold the cyclic trim release, adjusted my reference points where I wanted the aircraft to point, and now that I've released, it's going to maintain this left-hand orbit, but I believe, yes, there is uh, Arthur's seat over to my left, so we don't want to do that. So again, press hold my trim release, and then I'm going to bank over to the right this time. Now let's say we wanted to fly straight and level, because we've got a long flight off to, off to rescue someone or pick someone up from a car crash. So, what I'll do first is I'll set my uh, altitude. Now I could just press my altitude hold, and that'll hold me at my present altitude. And you can see the aircraft's just adjusting itself there. But the Alt A was set at 310, so it's descending down. So if I take that off, I'll position my head, and we'll move our Alt A to, let's say, a thousand. And then it'll click the button, and the aircraft will fly with the vertical speeds towards Alt A again. You can adjust your vertical speed by rotating the dial. Oh, if you have it actually selected. Now, let's say I want to change my speed. I want to go to 130 knots. What I can do is roll the indicated airspeed, and you can see here the little uh, blue diamond moving up. I'm going to move it to where I want to go. 130, and then press the button. The helicopter will automatically adjust its uh, movements to achieve that speed. Now, heading. If I look, I don't have my heading hold on, but my heading is pointing over 030. Let's say I want to fly 330. Now, I have this bound on my control so I can rotate the knob using a switch, but again, if you don't have enough hat switches or whatever, you can just rotate the knob to 330, press the button in, and then Bob's your mother's brother. Off you go to head 330. Now, you can see here, all these lights have gone green saying it's achieving the, the green box around the heading. It's still just settling down to that heading now. But we're at the right altitude. We wanted the right speed. And now we're on the right heading. Easy peasy. What we'll do is we'll head across the uh, the water here. And then we'll come into a hover. Now the aircraft has its own systems for hovering. Called here. The automatic hover. So you've got ground speed hold and ground automatic hover. And you can use the beep trim. Now, what I mean by beep trim is we're heading 330. If I want to come a little bit to the left, I tap the beep trim and it just moves it very slightly. If I want to go up a little bit because we've got our altitude hold on. If I wanted to go up a little bit, I just tap the beep button. And the aircraft starts to climb. Easy peasy. Now, the beep buttons can be used uh, when you're in the automatic hover and that's going to allow you to fine-tune your hover. Personally, I prefer to hover manually, but you can use automatic hover. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to deselect my heading, deselect my indicated airspeed, and deselect the altitude hold. So it's now me flying the aircraft. We'll just come over to the left here and we'll hover uh, just over one of these little inlets. So I'm going to bring the speed down. Now for the auto hover, you want to be below 30 knots. Otherwise, it's not going to kick in. So we'll fly over here, get a bit lower. Caution, terrain. Caution, terrain. And then we'll activate the uh, auto hover. You can see here it says hands on because my hands are actually moving the controls at the moment. So we're slowing ourselves down. We're still too fast to engage our auto hover, but like I said, we're going to hover as we get over to one of these ponds here. You can see here, little beep trim with attitude. You can do that on your uh, your four-way hat switch, just like a normal trim would be in an aircraft, really. So while I'm in auto hover, I can also tell the aircraft I want it to hover and maintain a direction on the heading. So I'm going to pre-program in about 260 on the heading. 
which is where I am now. We're bringing our speed down. And we can also engage our altitude. So let's say I wanted my altitude to be much lower. We'll go for there for the altitude. Now what I can do is engage the auto hover mode and let go of the controls. Tell it to hold the altitude and tell it to hold the heading. Oh, sorry, we need to hold the auto hover. So it's auto hovering in this position. I don't have my hands or my feet on the pedals and if I go outside, it's just holding that position. Maintaining an auto hover. If I wanted to go slightly to the right, again, I can do this by using the beep trim. So I'm just going to press and hold and you'll see the aircraft start to slide over. The longer you hold it, the more obviously it's going to move. You can just tap it or you can press and hold. Now, while I'm in the auto hover mode, if I wanted to change the heading, let's say I want the heading there while I'm in the auto hover, it'll swing around to that heading. Then when I'm happy, just click back into the auto hover mode. The aircraft will adjust itself and we can have our tea and biscuits while uh, old Dave in the back there goes down and rescues uh, our casualty from, I don't know, a, a farm accident or a shipping accident, whatever it is that you need to use a winch for. You can do this in auto hover. Again, I tend not to use it. I prefer to fly uh, just using my hands. What else we can do is we can navigate to certain points. So I've set up Edinburgh here as a point I want to navigate to. I've just engaged the hover mode while I talk about this. So what I can do is I can look at uh, Edinburgh, click that, and then push nav, and then activate. That's going to give me direct track on my map towards Edinburgh. It also gives me here an option to fly as a nav source. So if I press nav for navigation source, it's going to take me down to where's what I want to be. Now, obviously, you want to be flying. You don't want to be coming out of auto hover when you do this. So you'll actually want to be flying towards it. So if I come off all my autopilot modes, come off altitude, come off heading, adjust or interrupt the system, and start to fly there. I can adjust my speed. Let's go at 120 on the speed. We'll go at this altitude. That's fine. And then if we click on navigation source, the aircraft will automatically turn towards that navigation source. Now it's on speed hold, navigation source. So we're heading towards Edinburgh, 4.2 miles away, three minutes. Again, if we want to change that, we can go into our uh, little computer here, select Uniform Whiskey, Edinburgh, push nav, activate. Now all the data will change and the aircraft will start to fly off towards that point and you can sit back and relax. Look at the lovely fourth bridges and the rail bridge, eh? Beautiful part of the world. That's pretty much the basics for the autopilot mode. Again, I rarely touch uh, that. <laughs> I normally just use this to navigate. It's easy enough for me to use the heading to roll it off and stuff. I don't need to worry about the, the navigation. That's pretty much it for the navigation video. Of course, there will be things that I haven't covered. Uh, there will be more in-depth tutorials out there, I'm sure. But this will get you flying steady and level in this helicopter in no time. It's an absolute pleasure to fly this aircraft in Flight Sim. Easily, easily one of my favourite modules that's been released. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll stutter. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, Tactical Pascal. Oops.